Chris Black Ops Cybersecurity for the People. You see it, let's get it. Telephone security, uh, voice over internet protocol, voice over IP, uh, chat bots, IVR, integrated voice uh, response. These are the things uh, people hook up to their corporate phone systems. Anything you hook up to the corporate phone system, of course, is going to be on the internet. Now, a voice pack and a data pack, it really looks about the same on the internet. So let's see uh, how we would actually secure that and lock that down. A lot of people are actually going to get hacked through their uh, chat box, uh, like I said, IVR, phone systems. Um, everybody has uh, the phone systems on the network. So let's go through a few checks. Of course, we're going to stick it and let's get going. So telephone and uh, VoIP uh, security. Do some distance digs, a little zero trust, manage. Of course, we on blue team and locking it down. So let's start. So that's the standard uh, VoIP. Uh, architectural diagram. Let me make myself a little smaller on that. Uh, let me go to make that a little smaller. So that's the standard um, voice architecture. At the top, we had a couple uh, web real time chat. Then you have the uh, phone system. I'm sorry, the actual telephone. Going over the internet, going through the web chat gateway. Of course, up here we have it connected to our corporate database, so that's kind of the risk right there. A lot of times when you call in and ask you to put your social security number in there, the last four, or your zip codes. So if hackers come through your chat or through your phone system, right, they will have access to your database, depending on how. PBX, another phone system, and of course the uh, PSTN gateway, which is going out on the internet to the actual phone line. Right, so there you see the uh, HTTP, WebSocket, SIP, the blue dash of the SIP, RTP, and strip, and just the green and strip. Right, so we need to figure out how to lock all that down. Of course, HTTP with HTTPS. A lot of times with SIP, depending on the volume, we would just have a VPN tunnel from that to the uh, PBX. So there's a couple ways to do that. So, of course, this is our class architecture. So where would you put your web server and your chat? Where would you put your application and your SIP? And of course, the corporate database. So right, so now we gotta get our uh, VoIP system in our um, classic internet, right? And set up usually using Cisco, VLAN, subnets, right? All that stuff still is applied, right? How are we controlling our network? How are we controlling our traffic within the uh, VoIP system? All right, so. VoIP over internet, also IP telephony is a method and group of technologies for delivering voice communications and uh, multimedia sessions. The, inter the term internet telephony or broadband telephony or broadband phone system specifically refers to provisioning of a communication service, voice fax, XMX, and voice messaging over the internet rather than via the public switch telephone network, PSTN, also known as the plain old telephone system. Instead of doing that, right, they just taking it over the internet, more efficient and uh, more speed and also less cost. So once again, we're going to talk about the checks for telephone system, which includes a chat box, IVR, voice over IP, or anything you're doing over your phone system. Uh, VoIP security, we're going to also, which talks about uh, NIST, National Institute for Standard and Technology, which reports to uh, FISMA. Federal Information Security Management, the DOD, uh, Department of Defense, or the distance stick checks. And basically, there are uh, hardening uh, security checks for DOD that will harden the information system or software from malicious attacks. So, from the VoIP, we're not going to go out. There was 107 stick checks, three highs, 82 uh, medium checks, and 22 low checks. So let's look over a couple highs real quick. Corp to court, both VoIP traffic transversing of a public accessible wide area network must use FIPS validated encryption for unclassified or NSA approved uh, encryption for classified traffic. So basically FIPS means that that encryption has been sent to the government. They must have to sign off on it to make sure it was actually working properly, right? 
what connections are established across the publicly accessible WAN and all communication and confidentiality integrity can be lost. Information gleaned from signaling uh, may from the message attack the system or for other nefarious reasons. Um, all these are actually being in the description box. So we're just going to hit them at a high level so we can just start quick. Uh, vulnerability 8328, a high implementation of a VoIP system in a local enclave must not degrade the enclave's perimeter protection due to inadequate design of VoIP boundaries and connection to the external network. VoIP has a high probability of has a high probability <coughs> of connection to external networks, probability of to significantly degrade the enclave protection afforded by the requirement of boundary firewalls, unless the firewalls designed properly to handle uh, uh, properly handle VoIP traffic. The typical firewall used to protect an enclave support data traffic is not capable of properly handling or supporting real-time communications, VoIP or video conferencing. So a lot of times Cisco has a special VoIP enabled firewall because you remember um, data traffic packets can come out of order. If voice packets come out of order, right, your voice is going to be jittery, uh, words are going to be missing. So a lot of times you need a special firewall to handle that. So uh, vulnerability 8328 high, VoIP stateful firewall and session border controls in parallel with the data firewall provides the best protection of my enclave. Dynamically open and require the UDP ports to permit the flow of the media performing stateful inspections of a UDP media package dropping all nine session packets into a UDP port at the session end of that. After any activity, timeout greatly increases the enclave protection. When a voice system is closed, such as a DSN classified network, the entire address space of the WAN and connected enclave is managed by a single system management. In this instance, a specific limited and segregated address space may be assigned for all VoIP devices in the use of a network. So a lot of times they want you to have your VoIP traffic and your data traffic actually on separated subnets. So the speed of the VoIP wouldn't be affected by your data uh, packets. That could be expensive, so, um, but that's what uh, the actual security check is re recommending. Uh, vulnerability 16074 high, deficient policy or SOP for FTC and PC camera operations regarding the ability to pick up and transmit sensitive or classified information in a visual form. So a lot of times your VoIP system um, or your phone system, they have a camera on there because a lot of times they're actually going through a PC. So you need to uh, have policies to figure out what can those uh, cameras actually capture. And they're actually, especially with us, uh, a lot of people being remote, what is your camera seeing at home and is that appropriate or not? Um, I put one medium check in there, vulnerability 1944 medium. VoIP uh, session signaling must be encrypted to provide end to end interoperability and confidentiality and integrity because vendors do not have interoperability, lack end to end encryption, and did not provide assurance service uh, to support the command and control communication. So a lot of times when you're talking about SIP traffic, uh, on-print traffic, and connected to the database, you just need to confirm that it's end-to-end -end traffic. That's actually super hard to do. I've actually reviewed a couple of uh, um, VoIP systems, and getting end-to-end -end traffic is uh, pretty difficult. So uh, looking at the architecture, they're just talking about what's included in the in the telecommunication industry, real-time communications, commonly referred to as live media sessions between two endpoints with minimum latency. A voice session between two parties, telephone systems or mobile, instant messaging, live video sessions, video conferencing, telepress. Each of these preceding solutions has some components in the commonly components that provide authentication, authorization, and access to controls. Trust coding, buffering, and relaying, right? So we need to make sure all that stuff is secure, locked down, and who can have access. So those are a lot of things or pieces of a VoIP uh, architecture. So once again, that was certain, uh, something short and sweet. Once again, let's lock down the telephone system and the uh, VoIP system out there. Uh, a lot of checks will be in the description, and all, all the uh, links will be in the description. Professor Black Ops, please subscribe.